Hi, welcome back. Uh, let's go ahead and continue these problems, uh, the ones I didn't do on the first video. Um, and the first thing I want to do is talk about the domain of rational functions. So when we're finding the domain, what we want to do is we want to uh, set the denominator equal to zero. Okay, and then our solutions to that, so our solutions are restricted in our domain. Okay, so you'll see what I mean here in a second. Um, and this is nothing new. We've been doing this for um, in a lot of these sections so far. So, um, you know, it's something we just got to do. So what I want to do is take a look at this first one here. So I'm going to take x minus 5. I'm going to set that equal to 0 and solve for x. Okay, so if I add 5 and add 5, then what happens is, is I get x is equal to 5. Now this value makes f of x undefined, okay? And because it makes it, it undefined, in our domain, okay, we restrict it from our domain. So we don't put it in our domain. So we can say that uh, it would be all real numbers, okay, except x cannot equal 5, okay? Or we could write our domain in interval notation and say go from negative infinity to 5 and union that from 5 to infinity, okay? So either one of these would work for our domain. Okay, on the next one, uh, same thing. Let's take our denominator, which is x squared minus 25, set that equal to 0. And I could do this a number of ways. I could... Um, you know, use the square root property, and I think I'll just do that. Uh, so I'm going to add 25 to both sides. And so I get that x squared is equal to positive 25. So if I take the square root, all right, then I get that x is equal to plus or minus 5. Again, this is what makes g of x undefined. So this makes g of x undefined. Okay. So we could write our domain a couple different ways. Um, we could say uh, that our domain D is all real numbers, except that x cannot equal plus or minus 5. Okay, we could write that in interval notation. And we could say uh, go, going from negative infinity to negative 5, okay? Union that with from negative 5 to positive 5. Union that from 5 to positive infinity. And that is our domain. Okay, so either way you want to write that is fine. Okay, um, on C, okay, h of x, uh, x plus 5 over x squared plus 25. Let's go ahead and set that equal to 0. Okay, and what we end up getting here is I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. Okay, and so I get that x squared is equal to negative 25. All right, if I apply the square root both sides, I get that x is equal to plus or minus 5i. Okay, so this is a non-real solution. Okay, um, so therefore there are no restrictions in our denominator. Okay, so no real solutions. Oh man, whoop, whoop solutions, okay, in our denominator, so our, nothing can make our denominator undefined, okay? So this would be a domain of all real numbers, okay, because there is nothing that will make this denominator zero, okay? Um, so it's all real numbers, and our domain, we could write it as negative infinity to positive infinity. So either way, we want to write that, okay? All right, let's take a look at the next section. Uh, and on this one, it says, find the vertical asymptotes, if any, of the graph of each rational function. So what I want to do is this. Um, well, I want to factor each of these. So f of x, let's factor this. Numerator stays as x. Denominator can factor to x plus 2, or I'm sorry, x plus 1 times x minus 1. So now, since nothing divides out, I set each of my factors equal to 0. Okay. And so... I get that x is equal to negative 1, add 1 to both sides here, and I get x is equal to positive 1. So my vertical asymptotes, v, a, are at x equals uh, positive 1 and negative 1, okay? And that's my answer, okay? All right, let's take a look at part b. Now, part b is a little bit different, okay? 
In this function g of x, we keep our numerator, x minus 1, divided by our denominator, x plus 1, times x minus 1. Now, this part here, the x minus 1s divide out, okay? So when it divides out, that means that we have a whole, okay? But, so our vertical asymptote, all right, so x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 from both sides, so I get x equals negative 1. So I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1, okay? And then here at my whole, okay, I take x minus 1, set it equal to 0, all right? And so then I get that x is equal to positive 1. So I have a whole at x equals 1. So remember that if it divides out, okay, then you have a whole, all right? So that's what we have. Uh, part C, okay, <clears throat> now what I have here, h of x is equal to x minus 1 over x squared plus 1, um, I can't factor anything, okay? I can't factor, okay? Um, so I, you know, I want to set my denominator equal to 0, all right? And so I get that x squared is equal to negative 1. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I get that x is equal to plus or minus i. And when I have plus or minus i, this is non-real numbers, non-real solution. Okay, so therefore, this has no vertical asymptote. Okay, no vertical asymptote or holes. Okay, all right, let's take a look over here about the horizontal asymptote. So what I want to do is look at the degree of each of these. So my degree in my numerator is 2, <clears throat> so I have a degree of 2, over a degree of 2. So I'm just looking for my largest exponent. Okay, so now because these are the same, okay, I take my ratio of leading coefficients. So my horizontal asymptote <clears throat> is at the line y equals 9 over 3, which is just the line y equals 3. Okay, so that's where I have a horizontal asymptote. All right. Uh, in part B, <clears throat> okay, um, I might have a degree of 1 divided by a degree of 2. So this is small. Okay, this is big. So then what I can do is I can say that this has a horizontal asymptote at the line y equals 0. Okay, and that's always going to be the case. All right, now on part C, all right, here's what I got. I got a degree of 3 divided by a degree of 2. So the top is big, the bottom is small, okay, and what we're going to get is we get no horizontal asymptote, all right, and that's all we've got. All right, let's take a look at the next page and let's graph these. Okay, so on this one, I want to graph this equation, 3x minus 3 um, over x minus 2. Uh, the first thing I want to do is look at my vertical asymptotes. So let me write this over here, f of x, we got a little bit of room, 3x minus 3 over x minus 2. Okay, so I just want to factor this just to ensure uh, what I have. So f of x is equal to 3 times x minus 1 over x minus 2. Okay, so nothing divides out, all right? So we don't have any holes, but I do want to calculate, find our vertical asymptote. Okay, so I'm going to take x minus 2 and set it equal to 0, add 2 to both sides, and I get that x is equal to 2. Okay, so this is my vertical asymptote occurs at x equals 2. So on the graph, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to 2, and I'm going to draw in a vertical line. Okay, to show my vertical asymptote. All right, so that's my vertical asymptote. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to find my horizontal asymptote. All right, um, so over here, I've got my horizontal asymptote. Uh, and I know that my degree is 1 up top, and my degree down below is also 1. So because these are the same, Okay, um, then my horizontal asymptote is the ratio of my leading coefficients. In this case, uh, that's going to be 3 over 1. And so my horizontal asymptote is at the line y equals 3. Now, when I have that, 
All right, I'm going to come over to my graph and I'm going to plot that point. Okay. All right, now the other thing I want to do is plot a couple of points. Okay, because I want to figure out, uh, are, you know, where are we at on this graph? We're going to be up here on this side, down here, over here. Uh, and so in order to do that, uh, what I want to do is I want to find my y-intercept. Okay, and in order to find my y-intercept, that means I just want to plug in 0 for x. And so I get 3 times 0 minus 3 over, uh, what is it, x minus 2, so 0 minus 2. Okay, so when I do that, I get negative 3 over negative 2. So f of 0 is equal to that, uh, and then f of 0 is equal to positive 3 halves. Okay, so now this, remember, this translates to the point uh, 0, 3 halves. So let me put that here, and that's going to be 0, 1 half. Okay, and then let me find my x, or my, yeah, my x-intercept, okay? So for my x-intercept... All right, so my, for my x-intercept, I want to set my function equal to 0. So 0 is equal to 3x minus 3 over x minus 2. Now, in order to solve for x, I can just multiply both sides by x minus 2, my denominator, get that out. And the cool thing is, is that once I do this, all right, these are going to divide out. 0 times x minus 2 is going to remain as 0. And that's going to give me 3x minus 3. Add 3 to both sides. So then I get that uh, 3 is equal to 3x, divide by 3, divide by 3, and that x is equal to 1. All right, so now what I do, x is equal to 1, y is 0. This translates to the point 1, comma 0, all right, and that's my x-intercept over here, okay? And so what I can do is I can now plot this point here. All right, and let's back up a little bit because here's what we're going to have. So our graph is going to do something like this. All right, and then what it's going to do now is shoot back up here and come up that way, okay? Um, and another way that you can check is just by graphing this. Okay, so you can, let's just graph it in Desmos and see how close we were. Okay, so if we go into Desmos and if I graph this and we're going to get um, parentheses... All right, uh, 3x minus 3, uh, close parentheses, divided by x minus 2 is going to look like that, okay? Um, and so we did this right, all right? And so, you know, that's our graph. We did this correctly. Another way that you can check on, you know, whether or not your graph is going to be up here is to choose a point to plug in up here, okay? So if I choose, say, like, x equals 5, okay, or 4, all right, let's find f of 4. Okay, so f of 4, and let's just see what we get. It should be above 3, so I'm going to do 3 times 4 minus 3 over uh, 4 minus 2. So this is going to give me 12 minus 3 over 4 minus 2. So that's going to give me 9 over 2 which is about 4.5, okay? Uh, not about, it is 4.5. So that value, that point on the graph is larger than 3, okay? So that kind of tells you how this goes, okay? All right, let's talk about the next one, okay? So on this one, uh, first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this, and this is also f of x, okay? So I'm going to do uh, f of x is equal to 2x squared over x plus 3 times x minus 3. All right, so first things first, I'm going to find my vertical asymptotes, okay? Um, and that's going to give me, uh, since nothing divided out, that's good. I've got x plus 3 equals 0, and I've got x minus 3 is equal to 0. So if I subtract 3 from both sides, okay, I get x is equal to negative 3. Add 3 to both sides here, and we get x is equal to positive 3. So what I've got is I've got vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 3 and 3. All right, so let me go put those in on my graph, okay? Um, and so here's 3. Let me do these here. All okay, and then negative 3 is over here. OK, 
Okay. Now uh, let's find our horizontal asymptote. Okay. So our horizontal asymptote, uh, let's take uh, the degree up top, which was 2, divided by the degree down low, which is 2. And since these are the same, we want to take the ratio of our leading coefficients. So uh, we have a horizontal asymptote at the line y equals 2 over 1, which is really just the line y equals 2. So now we're going to come up here all right, and draw that guy in. Okay, um, and let's do this, all right, let's find our x-intercepts, so x-intercepts, um, and that's, gonna, or, yeah, it doesn't matter, x-intercepts first, uh, set the whole thing equal to zero, so zero is equal to 2x squared over x squared minus 9, so if I multiply both sides by x squared minus 9, x squared minus 9, okay, these are going to divide out, and these are going to give me 0. So I got 0 is equal to 2x squared. Now you can divide by 2. Okay, those divide out. I get 0 is equal to x squared. Take the square root of both sides. So x is going to equal 0. Okay, now the other thing is, is let's find our y-intercept. Okay. And when I find my y-intercept, I want to find f of 0. All right, so I'm going to get 2 times 0 squared over 0 squared minus 9. So here I'm going to get 2 times 0 over 0 minus 9, which gives me 0 over negative 9, which gives me 0. Okay, so I have the same x-intercept and y-intercept, so I have this point on the graph. Okay, now what I want to do is to kind of figure out what some of these other points are here, okay? Um, and so let's do this. I'm going to find what, I'm going to plug in 2 into my function. I'm going to plug in negative 2. I'm going to plug in 4 and negative 4, okay? And the reason why I'm doing this is to kind of help out with what we're supposed to get. So f of negative 4, do that point first. Um, and so we're going to get this. Um, 2 times negative 4 squared over uh, negative 4 squared minus 9. Okay, that's going to give me 2 times 16 over 16 minus 9. So we get 32 over 5, or no, 7. Okay, which is going to give me a value of 4.57. Okay, now... So 4.57, so negative 4, and then that point is going to be up here, okay? <coughs> so now, uh, let's plug in negative 2, all right? F of negative 2, and that's going to give me 2 times negative 2 squared over 2 squared minus 9. So this gives me 2 times 4 over 4 minus 5, so this is going to give me 8 over or 4 minus 9, 8 minus negative 5, which is approximately 8 divided by 5 is 1.6. Okay, so when I plug in negative 2, I get a value of 1.6, okay, which is up here. Now let's plug in um, 2 into my function. So f of 2 gives me 2 times 2 squared over 2 squared minus 9. So that gives me 2 times 4 over 4 minus 9. So we're going to get the same thing. We're going to get 1.6. Okay, why don't we do that? So if I do that, let me get 1.6 here, okay, roughly speaking. And then uh, let's plug in 4 just to see what's going on. So 2 times 4 squared over 4 squared minus 9. So that's going to give me 2 times 16 over 16 minus 9, which is going to give me, what was that, 4.57? We've already done that. Okay, so that point's going to be up here. Okay. Now what we're going to do, okay, the reason why I plotted all those points is that it helps me where to graph. If I know there's a point above that line, okay, we're going to draw like that. This line here 
is going to go as such, okay? And connect your points with your asymptotes, and that's going to be our graph. Now, let's just double check real quick that that's what we get, okay? Okay, so now that I've graphed this, I realize that we've done it wrong. And if, hopefully you found my mistake because I know exactly where it is. And this value down here should be negative. Okay, so 8 divided by negative 5, 8 divided by negative 5. So that was a mistake that I make. So now, here's what I got. Let me erase this. Okay, so do the same on your page. Okay, and so now here's what I get. I still have the point zero, 0, but at negative 2, I've got negative 1.6. Okay, and then at 2, I've got negative 1.6. So these do that. Okay, and so that's how we graph it. So it's important that we check, okay, and we'll have the opportunity to do that when we take our tests and do our homework. Okay, but we do need to show the work on how to get there. Okay, so... Uh, that's all I got for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. We'll see you in a bit. Thanks a lot. Bye!